you know, at least I've got my maps to keep me, <laughs> keep me passionate about something. Most of my maps are completely imaginary, but based on something I've seen or inspired by something. So I think the early ones were, I used to sit behind my dad when we went on family vacations, and I was always looking at the window, and I would try and get hold of the actual maps that they were map reading from. Um, and at some points, they, they let me actually map read. So I've always been interested by the representation of the real world on a map, and then vice versa. So I was inspired by what I'd seen, so all my early maps were probably inspired by family trips. When I was in normal school in England, um, I did some art stuff, but that was mainly painting and drawing. Um, so the maps I just did by myself. Um, when I was 16, I actually started work for the British government as a cartographer. So I was trained as a cartographer and a draftsman and some surveying. Um, that was formal training for a couple of years. And that taught me how to be much more accurate but I mean, I use pens to do all my maps, and when you're trained as a, as a draftsman, you use scribing tools, so it's like a little diamond chisel, so you're cutting out things and you're using wax, and it's not as uh, creative, it's more organized, so you have to do certain things, then you have to do something else. So that made me much more appreciative of the level of detail, but it didn't really change what I was doing for fun. I do have people come in and do commissions and what they generally want in a commission is they'll give me a list, I've got a list somewhere around here, it's like six pages long of everything they've ever done in their lives, all their favourite places, all their family. Maybe they don't want certain family members on their map but <laughs> they, uh, they generally want to try and keep everyone happy. Um, so a commission map would generally be something like, um, a recent one I did was a, um, a retired lieutenant colonel and he'd been posted all over the world. So everywhere it had ever been posted was somewhere on the map. It was vaguely set in Montana where he was brought up, but every town was either a family member, there was an airfield named after his father-in-law who flew helicopters in the, uh, in the Vietnam War. All the major highways were the infantry or the divisions of the army he'd been uh, posted in. So it was extremely personal. And other ones I've done, like birthday presents, surprise gift, someone wants a gift for their husband's 30th birthday. Right. So I, I have fun with that because I can hide things in it. So I don't <laughs> tell them there's certain things in it that are very specific or meaningful to them. Yeah, to get something on Google Maps is uh, an interesting process. Um, I had the original architectural drawings that the architects did for the building and I redrew those in a format that looked somewhat like Google just for the building itself so that people can not get lost. And then what you do is you go to Google Maps and you have to be a registered user and you upload your image and you rectify it to fit to the photographs that are on Google Earth. And then you submit it, they spend however long they want reviewing it and making sure it meets their criteria. They probably redraw some of it and then one day it appeared. So I was walking around with my, uh, my phone and, like, <laughs> and you turn it on and the Wi-Fi is on in the building and it shows you within a few feet exactly where you, where you are in the building. <laughs> Some of my spare time was spent building Lego. And it's quite odd, but I've been drawing maps since I was five. Some of the Lego in this is from when I was five. So I've had Lego and maps in me since I was a kid. This particular tower, I called it my improbable tower. Because what I wanted to do was build something that looked like it shouldn't necessarily stand up and I was building it at home and I wanted to get to the ceiling in our upstairs bedroom. So it was a peak ceiling. So I just kept building until I hit it. <laughs> so there was no plan, no design, just try and build something that kind of flowed and had lots of weight transference and trying to use kind of civil engineering thoughts. 
Well, I think what I do is somewhat unique. There are a lot of people who do maps as art. A lot of people use old maps as the background for art, but um, the maps on wood, where well, I'm using the, the grain of the wood as the contours, I think that is pretty unique. I've looked at a lot of stuff online. A lot of people do digital maps online. So they are, there are other people who do fictitious maps, but they're using GIS software and they're creating very detailed works and uh, detailed worlds with computers. So to be hand-drawn, plausible, fictitious, and on wood, and on canvas, and paper, and board, I think I am unique. But if someone else wanted to do this, you have to have an interest in maps, geography, uh, and places. And I would say you have to just start doing something you enjoy doing when you're fairly young. I mean, I've been doing this all my life, and I'm going to probably do it for the rest of my life. And it wasn't until about maybe 10 years ago, I was actually at an airport drawing a map, and the, the guy sat next to me, looked over me and said, is that a known art form? And I thought about it. No one had ever asked me. I'd just done my maps for myself. And I said yes. And I don't know why I said yes, but I said yes. It's a known art form. And he went, OK, that's really cool. Does anyone else do it? And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> and after that, I had another friend who encouraged me to show them. And we did a sidewalk art stroll in downtown Huntsville and then submitted to the Montesano Art Show. And I was accepted into that and realized other people like my maps because I was doing them for myself. So if other people wanted to do this, they're probably doing something for themselves anyway. So not necessarily maps. But to draw maps, I mean, I was trained. I was doing it for 11 years before I was trained. I would say find something you really enjoy and and work at it and practice it and study other people and look to see what exists. So I hope no one does exactly what I'm doing.